Hello everyone and welcome to another car profile. This week we are looking at the Ford GT LM Spec 2 test car. Now this is a unique car which was a joint venture between Gran Turismo and Ford and it actually first appeared back in GT5 Prologue and we have actually seen it in some of the Gran Turismo intro videos uh, before GT Sport. Now this car is effectively a GT1 car uh, and to make it into the Group 3 category, the GT3 category that it actually sits in, it has to be toned down quite a lot. Now, as it's not a real car, we can't really give any history behind the car, but let's talk about the engine, which is 5.4 litre V8 engine. Now, the drivetrain is MR, so that means it's mid-engined rear-wheel drive, so it should be more about handling uh, and less about, you know, having a heavy front end. Now, as I say, it was a GT1 car originally, so the power was originally 590 brake horsepower, weighing in at only 1,165 kilograms. But it has to be brought down to Group 3 category, so we have 89% power, so that power drops from 590 down towards 525 brake horsepower, and the weight goes up from 1,165 all the way up to 1,316 kilograms. That's 113%. Now, in terms of torque values, now, I, I figured I'd add this in because it's actually an important factor. Um, it's 65.6 kilograms of force. So this is quite a large force. And I put this in just to demonstrate why the car potentially is faster than other cars, as you'll see in the car profile, especially versus last week's. Um, and why actually it's actually got less horsepower and more weight. It seems a bit counterintuitive, but that's the figure there for you. So, similar to last week, we're actually going to look at the car scores that Gran Turismo give the cars before we jump in to the circuit performance. Now, these scores are done by Gran Turismo, and we've done these on racing hard tyres only, so these change on a per tyre basis. But in terms of the scores, max speed, 6.8, acceleration, 5.7, braking, 3.8, cornering, 3.8, and stability is 5.8. Now on the right hand side you can see the graph as well. Now, so you can see that you actually do have to rev this car a heck of a lot here to actually get the maximum out the car there because you can see the curves on the right hand side. But let's actually now jump to that car profile as we go to our first circuit, Dragon Trail Seaside. So here we are at Dragon Trail Seaside, a very fast circuit. So if it's a fast car it should do very well here. It will also test curbs as well. Now this is my fastest lap, as always we're going to use optimum time, but I always show you my fastest lap, just in case you think I'm driving the car wrong. Um, but curbs, first of all, it seems to handle them quite well. It doesn't really bottom out, it can go through them, it can cut that very nicely. Um, all very well and good really. Now as we leave sector 1, the one thing I found with this car is it actually had a little bit of understeer. Very similar to the Aston Martin GT1 car. As this car is like based on a GT1 and because it's been nerfed so much with a lot of weight, I suspect the weight is having a big contribution to that understeer, which is not as bad as other cars, but you can definitely feel it. You do have to drive it. Now you may see I'm revving it absolutely to the brim there. Uh, that's what I found was the fastest way to drive this car as we come into this braking zone here. I did find it a little bit of an issue to stop the car. I had to brake a little bit earlier than normal on this circuit and on others as well. Uh, but overall, it wasn't too bad. In terms of stability, it was very stable. Okay, going through this chicane of death here, um, it was really nice, actually. I enjoyed it. I, I was expecting to take off because it's MR, not a lot of weight over the front, but it doesn't. So I'm assuming the ballast that has added it has just really made it flat. So it does do the chicane of death very, very nicely. Come into this corner. Again, you're going to see a little bit of understeer there. You see me dropped a second. You can see the car doesn't really want to turn, uh, but the minute it is turned, you can just plant your foot and off you go. We're going to head towards the line. We are in the 37s here, which is where I expect cars to be. We get a 37.209 there in terms of our fastest lap. But in terms of our optimum, we get it down to actually in the 36s there. As uh, on the lap 10, we managed to improve our last sector there. Lots of different sets added up. That's why we do the optimum, because then we get the best of uh, all worlds. You know, you have 10 chances rather than just the one fast lap. Coming to Interlagos, we're testing the undulations here. Again, it's a little bit of power going up the hill uh, and stability as well in slow corners. Coming through the centre S there, no real issues. A again, understeer on this corner, I did find a little bit of an issue. You just saw I lifted there slightly. Um, so something to think about with this car, it does understeer. But in terms of stability, 
it's actually really nice to be fair. Another very stable car. One, if you're new to the game or beginners to the game or potentially struggling with a lot of rear end action, then maybe you want to try the Ford GT. You know, it's a little bit less understeery than an FR car. Um, you are going to struggle in terms of other areas of the car, which we'll get to shortly. Uh, but as a stable car, it's, you know, it's, it's really good to be fair. As we come into this really slow corner, uh, or so section of corners on Interlagos, you can see I'm just waiting to put the power down. Uh, I stay in second gear there, I wouldn't go to first. First, I did find it a little bit unstable, but it tends to be because you were at the really peak end of the revs. Now, as we come through here, once again, we're going to try and chuck it left here. We're going to have to lift off here. Look at that, a long lift there to try and get it around the corner as we then hit the last sector here. Understeer leaving here, but if you can plant your foot as I do here, this was a really nice sector there. I accelerate out of there. Happy days. We can accelerate towards the line. Again, very stable there. You didn't really see that much action with the car, which is good. And as I say, as a beginner, if you want to try this car, I think it's a worthwhile car to go to. It seems very quick as well. You can see we're on the 31.1 down there. We can actually get the 31.1 in terms of fast saps as well. And it doesn't actually change that much in terms of our optimum. We got it near the end as well. So, you know, we are showing that the car is improving throughout. And I'm actually getting the grasp of the car. So we jump to Suzuka, which is more of a balanced circuit. You know, there's lots of handling then in here and also lots of power. Straight away, you can see, I was just going through there, just to make sure everything is legitimate. You saw brake balance zero. All these tests are done with brake balance zero, just so that this is obviously the default setting of the car. Brake balance is very personal preference. You know, you can judge that accordingly. So going through the uh, first corner, which is where we test trail braking quite a lot. Very nice to trail brake this car. Very, very nice. It handles it very well. Uh, understeers a little bit, as I've already said previously on the other track. So you do have to be aware of that. You have to brake a tiny bit earlier. But you can trail brake for days in this car. So if you want to practice that technique, maybe this is the car for you. We come through here. A little bit of understeer, but we carry on through all the same. You can see we're very close on our sector one. On our delta, we're very close as well. Going to Degna one here. We do cut quite a lot there. We are risking the exit there. But I found that actually you could abuse curbs a little bit here in this car. And it was fine. So I'm assuming the weight, the additional weight in the group three category is helping it out a lot here. Into the hairpin. Now this corner it really struggled with. You can see I'm in first gear here and you just see a little bit of oversteer there. Not too much but a little bit. I did struggle with the hairpin in this car. I think the very very slow corners, first gear corners, you will struggle with this car. Other than that I think it's actually fine and as I say I think it's as stable as anything. Going to towards Spoon you'll see a little bit of that understeer again. You can see it just trying to eke out towards the right there. We bring it back, we drop to second gear, a little bit of oversteer there to try and get the turn in because we are suffering with that understeer as we now accelerate on. So we're in the 59s. I expect most cars to be in the 58s. There may be the odd OP car that ends up in the 57s. But uh, you can see that we just jumped to 58s there actually because we've had a crack in sector 3 as we head towards the chicane now. We have to break a little bit earlier. We are carrying a little bit of speed here. So we just cut the first part nicely and the second part. Penalties are on. I do the same line in every car anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Otherwise, I could go to the inside here and try and get a cracker. I don't. We get a 59-0 there with our optimum staying down in that 58-9 sort of area. Now, this isn't all we do with the car. We do an acceleration test and then also tyres and fuel. It gives you an overall idea and picture. So with this, we accelerate flat out from the very beginning and we do 0 to 100. We do all the tests all in one go. I just remembered to put traction control on there. And then we turn it off as we change to second. And as we hit the 100 mile an hour marker, 7.116. So that's actually a tenth quicker than the Aston that we did the previous week. So much faster in acceleration. If you're looking at grid starts, maybe a car to look out for here. Um, so what we do is we then do four laps. And this is on times 10 tyre, times 10 fuel. Four laps. And at the end, we see how much fuel is left and how much is uh, left in terms of the tyres as well. Now, if a car struggles with tyre performance, generally you'll see that the laps uh, go, go away from you. So you'll get your faster slap earlier on and then the times will start to drop. Um, we saw with the Aston, or you didn't necessarily see it as much with the Aston last week, but uh, the times actually improved as the fuel got lower. Because obviously fuel has a weight, the times improved there. Now with this car, it was actually very, very different. We got a faster slap on the second and then it dropped. So it obviously struggles with tyre wear a little bit more here. I'm showing you a bit more of the lap here just so you get an idea. We use rating softs, of course, to make sure we get the tyre wear in and we can really see the difference. Now, in fuel, you can see the fuel has been absolutely hammered here. At one point, I didn't think it was actually going to make the four laps. 
I'm really glad I did put this at a four lap test, not a five lap, because there ain't a chance in hell this can do five laps on this 10 times fuel, especially going flat out. And you have to go flat out in order to get the speed. The minute you start short shifting, you start losing time. Well, that's what I found anyway. As you can see, we've done a sneaky little merge there, straight to the final lap. We're going to jump to this camera now so we can get the tyre wear. But in terms of fuel, there you have it. You can already see we're at 6% now, 5%. The Aston finished with 20, I think it was last time. So we are really, really struggling here. We only just make it. Um, so there you go. We have 2% fuel left. So a big, big difference in terms of fuel. We're going to add up all these scores, obviously, once we have a leaderboard. And now we have two cars. We can grit that leaderboard. In terms of tyre wear, there you have it. So 81% front left, 79% front right, 77 rear left, and 66 rear right. It really got hit hard, that rear right there. Um, and in terms of the time, this is a, uh, I think it's 6.07. So three seconds quicker than the Aston that we did last time. So kind of interesting that. Definitely has some pace, this car. And we saw it was much faster at each of the circuits as well. As I say, we're going to create a leaderboard now with these two cars. I will do some of the old cars in the background. Uh, and this is then going to give us our overall balance of the cars, I hope. Uh, and give you a really good idea on what cars you should or shouldn't select. That's going to be it in terms of this car profile with the Ford GT LM Spec 2 test car. I hope you enjoyed this and the little additions. Uh, I hope to see you again for more car profiles very soon.